Wow, you know, renal tubular acidosis is unquestionably one of the most challenging things to learn in all of medicine. And if we can access the step one USMLE parts of our brain, you'll get it. Now the problem we get here is that most people never really learned it for step one and it got skipped. Part of the reason it's difficult is the terminology is horrible. Uh, terminology like type one and type two is a disaster. So the book and up to date and current and most references now will call them proximal and distal renal tubular acidosis because it's a much more descriptive and easier, much more straightforward. Still difficult, but doesn't have to be retranslated. Uh, second, there's a proximal distal type four. So whether you call it type one or whether you call it distal proximal, there is type one, type two, and type four. You see, it's very complicated. Where's type three? Why not one, two, three? And that's why it, RTAs are difficult. Uh, the terminology does not help us very much. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go take a two minute journey through the basic science part of your brain, and then you're gonna get, you to get all the answers right. So the first part of things is that when the uh, fluid is filtered at the glomerulus and into the proximal tubule, then down to the loop of Henle, what's the major thing in terms of acid base that happens at the proximal tubule? The main thing that happens at the proximal tubule in terms of acid base is that bicarbonate is reabsorbed. So normally what we have here is we have 85 to 90 percent of bicarbonate is reabsorbed at the proximal tubule. And if you remember that, now you just remembered half of the problem that we have with renal tubular acidosis. See, renal tubular acidosis itself is a difficult term. Most people think it means that the renal tubule is acidotic, but it's not necessarily acidotic. The renal tubule might be acidotic, the renal tubule might be basic. It's the body that's acidotic on the basis of a renal tubular problem. So we come back down here to the loop of Henle, thick ascending limb, and out here into distal tubule land as we're going into the collecting duct. And what goes on in the distal tubule in terms of acid base is that in the distal tubule in acid base, the problem that we, the uh, normal thing that happens is that we secrete hydrogen ions. We secrete hydrogen ions out of the body and into the distal tubule. So here we go. We now remember that this is the distal tubule this is the proximal tubule, and what's going on for acid base in each of them. The proximal tubule reabsorbs bicarb. Is that an old or a new bicarb? Is that an old or a new bicarb? It's an old bicarbonate that has just been filtered. So bicarbonate gets filtered, and you should be able to absorb most of it there. A small number is generated here at the distal tubule. This is where the site of new bicarbonate formation happens. This happens under aldosterone. Now, the so-called type 4 RTA, the type 4 is easiest to understand because type 4 is simply a diabetic person who has decreased in renin and a decrease in aldosterone, hyporenin, hypoaldo. We know that aldosterone makes you reabsorb sodium in exchange for hydrogen ions and potassium, reabsorb sodium and excretes hydrogen, reabsorb sodium and excretes potassium. So the type 4 RTA is the only one that has hyperkalemia because you don't have aldosterone. The test for that is that a normal person, if you restricted salt, if you restricted salt, a normal person, a normal person, how much salt would they have in their urine? If you restricted salt in the diet, if you restricted salt in your diet, a normal person would have a decreased urine sodium concentration. But in type 4 RTA, you restrict salt and you're still making salt go into the urine because you can't reabsorb it because you don't have aldosterone. Now, proximal renal tubular acidosis, distal renal tubular acidosis. Now, 
Let's not use terms like type 1 and type 2. Confusing. Number two, because it's called renal tubular acidosis, it doesn't mean that the renal tubular is necessarily acidotic. It doesn't mean that the renal tubule is acidotic. The renal tubule might be acidotic. The renal tubule might be alkalotic. Could be either one. So in a distal renal tubule acidosis, the defect is you can't excrete acid. The defect in a distal RTA is that you can't excrete acid. You can't excrete acid because it's broken. That's broken. It could be broken for based on chronic kidney disease. It could be broken because amphoterosin blocks it. It could be broken on the basis of myeloma. It could be broken on the basis of chronic kidney disease, but it's broken. So if you can't excrete acid, into the urine, the urine pH becomes basic. And basic for a kidney urine is greater than 5.5. A normal person should be able to put a hundred times more acid into their urine than in their blood. Your blood pH is 7.4. 10 times more acid in the urine would be 6.4. A hundred times more acid would be 5.4. A normal person should be able to put 100 times more acid into the urine compared to their blood, logarithmic scale, the same way there should be 100 times more garbage in your garbage can than in your pockets. It's garbage and you should be able to get rid of it. So if you have a distal renal tubular acidosis, you can't excrete acid. If you can't excrete acid, the urine pH is basic, and in a basic urine, people form kidney stones. Most stones, the calcium-containing ones. Stones. Oh, so you say you can't excrete acid? Let's test it. Let's give you acid. And when we give you acid IV, acid IV is ammonium chloride. Ammonium chloride. If I gave you acid in your bloodstream, if I poured acid into you, you should get rid of that acid. You should excrete that acid. If I gave you acid, you should excrete it. You should be able to put it into your urine. But they can't put it into their urine, so you give them acid. That hydrogen ion should come off of the ammonium chloride, and the problem is the urine stays basic. The urine pH is still basic at greater than 5.5. Now this seems complicated for average person at the beginning, but it's never going to change. There is not one word new on renal tubular acidosis in the last 40 years. It's just that most people go like this. I can't, I won't, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna learn it, and you can't make me. No, I can't. And I'm not here to tell you what to do with your life. It's not my place to tell you what to do with your life. It's just my place to tell you what to do if you want to get a good grade on your test. So you give acid to test it. They can't excrete acid. A normal person would excrete the acid. They can't excrete the acid. Well, how are you going to treat this? Well, the distal tubule may be broken, but the proximal tubule is fine. So the answer is you give them bicarbonate and they absorb it in the proximal tubule. Because a distal tubule problem needs a proximal tubule solution. Type 4 RTA, diabetics with hyporenin, hypoaldosteronism. It's the only one with hyperkalemia. The treatment for that one, by the way, since you don't have aldosterone, is we treat it by giving aldosterone and we give aldosterone in the form of something called fludrocortisone because fludrocortisone is the steroid that has the highest mineralocorticoid activity. You know, when I was a medical student, I understood what aldosterone was, but I never understood when they said mineralocorticoid. I was like, what the hell is the mineral? What's how I know what aldosterone is, makes you absorb sodium and excrete potassium. Absorb sodium and excrete hydrogen ion. But what's this mineral thing? Well, the mineral is sodium. The mineral is sodium. So we replace aldosterone. 
Now, proximal RTA is a little harder for people because at the beginning, when you can't absorb bicarbonate, at the beginning, when you can't absorb bicarbonate, the urine pH at the beginning is high because all the bicarb is going out into the urine. Now, after all the bicarb runs out, 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 then the urine pH becomes low again when the distal tubule picks up the rest. Now, this is one of the hard things to people. If you can't absorb bicarb, how come the urine pH could be acidy? Because at the beginning, it is basic, but when it all runs out, there's, the distal tubule picks up the rest. But this speaks to the point that says that renal tubular acidosis doesn't mean that the renal tubule is always acidotic. The renal tubule might be acidotic. The renal tubule might be alkalotic. It's the body that's always acidotic. It's the body that's acidotic in renal tubular acidosis. I can't excrete acid, my body retains acid. I can't absorb bicarb, my body is acidy. I can't excrete acid because I got no aldosterone, my body retains the acid. So we want to test it. So you say that you can't absorb the bicarb. You say you can't absorb bicarb here, that this is broken, proximal RTA. That mechanism is broken. I can't absorb the bicarb. Well, let's test it. We give bicarbonate to the patient. Now, if you were acidotic, your body is acidotic, and I gave you bicarbonate, you should absorb all that bicarbonate. You should absorb all of it. But a person who has proximal RTA can't absorb it because this is broken. The tubule is broken. The proximal tubule is broken and I can't absorb the bicarb. I can't absorb the bicarb because it's broken. So if I give it to you, that urine pH becomes basic because it now runs right out into your urine. Now the problem with the proximal RTA is I can't treat it by just giving bicarbonate like I can distal RTA. I can't treat it by just giving bicarbonate because the bicarbonate will spill right out. It's like trying to fill a gas tank that's got a hole in it. I know that if I have a proximal tubule problem, the treatment lies in the distal tubule. The same way here, I have a distal tubule problem. I can't excrete acid. I have a proximal tubule solution. I give bicarbonate, which is absorbed in the proximal tubule. So how do I get a distal tubule solution here? Let's review it. Proximal renal tubular acidosis. I can't absorb bicarbonate. The bicarbonate runs into my urine, my urine pH is high. After the body runs out, my urine pH becomes low. Originally, I used to lose a lot of hair. Now I don't lose hair anymore. The diagnostic test, I give them bicarb. A normal person should reabsorb all that bicarb. They can't reabsorb it. The urine pH goes high because it's spilling. So I try a distal tubule solution and I use a diuretic. And when I decrease the bodily volume, it increases renin and angiotensin and increases aldosterone. And that aldosterone makes you excrete acid hydrogen ion and reabsorb and reabsorb bicarb at the distal tubule by volume depleting them. You might say, well, why not just give aldosterone? Why not just give fludrocortisone? Because it'll cause hypertension. It'll cause hypertension, that's why. But it's a distal solution for a proximal problem. I can't absorb bicarb proximally. Walt Whitman says, have you practiced so long to learn to read? Have you felt so proud to get at the meaning of poems? Stop this day and night with me, and you shall possess the origin of all poems. You shall possess the good of the earth and the sun.
Stop this day and night with me and absorb this and you shall possess the origin of all questions on RTAs and it's never going to change. All of the renal tubular acidoses have a high chloride. That's why they have a normal anion gap. They have a high chloride because when you're losing the bicarbonate, you basically are increasing the chloride. So even though your bicarbonate may be low, that's one anion, the chloride is high. And that is why the anion gap stays normal at 6 to 12, because they're hyperchloremic metabolic acidoses. All the RTAs have a high chloride. Proximal renal tubular acidosis, I can't absorb bicarbonate. Distal renal tubular acidosis, I can't excrete acid. Proximal RTA, I end up having a low urine pH and therefore no stones. Distal RTA, I have a high urine pH and I have stones. Proximal RTA, you say you can't absorb bicarb, give bicarb, watch it spill into the urine. Distal RTA, you say you can't excrete acid, I give acid and I watch your body accumulate it and you can't excrete it into the urine. Proximal RTA, I give a diuretic to do volume depletion and I treat it by having a distal solution absorbing more bicarb. Distal renal tubular acidosis, I can't excrete acid, I give bicarb which is absorbed at the proximal tubule. Type 4, I got no aldo, yo give me some aldo, doc it hurts when I do that, don't do that. They're both hyperchloremic. They both have a normal anion gap. Even though the bicarb is low, the chloride is high, normal anion gap. That's different than lactate, different than sepsis, different than septic shock and anaphylactic shock, different than diabetic ketoacidosis, methanol and ethanol and ethylenoglycol, because this has a normal anion gap. Oh, but renal tubular acidosis has a normal anion gap, but then again, so does diarrhea, because diarrhea has the same thing. You're losing bicarbonate and you're absorbing more chloride. You maintain electrical neutrality. The anion gap acidoses, the one that have an increased anion gap, you're not just losing bicarb and absorbing chloride, you're actually putting another acid in there. You're putting beta-hydroxybutyric acid in there. You're putting uh, acetoacetic acid in there. You're putting lactic acid in there. You're putting oxalic acid in there, formic acid in there. You're adding in an acid and drives them both down. Here it's just an exchange. Now the next thing that I'm gonna do about urine anion gap, this is one of the hardest things there is in all nephrology. This is why people have nephrology as a specialty, because they don't want to have to learn this. So let's give it a shot. The urine anion gap distinguishes between these two. Okay, you can answer the question like that. You could just go that far and you can say to somebody, hey, which of these has a normal uh, uh, anion gap? They do. What do you use to distinguish between them? Urine anion gap. I'm a what? Urine anion gap. I'm an anion gap. You are an an urine anion gap. Now for the other people who want to actually understand it, the anion gap, like anion gaps everywhere, is the sodium, which is a cation. Here's our cation, ready? How do we know it's a cation? Here we go, cation, cation, minus the anions. Hmm. Well, this is an interesting thing. You see, measuring chloride. So the urine anion gap tells me whether your kidney can actually excrete acid. Because you see, in diarrhea, you can actually excrete that acid. In diarrhea, you can excrete, I don't see acid, I see chloride. No, the acid is there. No, I don't see acid, I see chloride. Huh. How does the chloride get to be acid? Ooh, now that's very interesting. So I can tell you that the reason that the chloride is acid is because it's actually ammonium chloride that we're measuring. You see, if you excrete acid, your urine chloride becomes high. 
That's why in diarrhea, the urine anion gap is a negative number because the sodium minus the chloride, the chloride is the higher number and therefore the anion gap is a negative number. Oh, in RTA, I can't excrete the acid. So that chloride, that chloride is a low number and therefore in RTA, the sodium minus the chloride is a positive number. Now this again, I full well expect that at least 70% of the, of the people watching don't get that in the first shot because it's very hard to understand how did acid get to be ammonium chloride. And it has to do with you remembering that in the distal tubule, when we excrete acid, we don't just excrete acid into the distal tubule. The acid in the distal tubule gets buffered off with ammonia, 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 like Pac-Man, binds the acid that comes out. And the ammonia and the acid becomes ammonium chloride. The um, acid that gets excreted in the distal tubule, ammonia, ammonia eats your acid, ammonia eats your acid and becomes ammonium. And the very scientific way to remember this is going ammonia eats your acid, um, ammonia, um. Ammonia becomes ammonia um, because they ate your acid. Tasty, yummy, yummy. Short answer is normal anion gap renal fluid acidosis versus diarrhea. Uh, diarrhea can still excrete the acid. It becomes a negative number because the chloride is high. RTA can't excrete the acid. The chloride is low. Short answer is urine anion gap tells them apart. Okay, you're right, it's hard, it's difficult. It's not my fault, it's not me. I don't invent these diseases. Stop blaming me for tough diseases. It's not my fault.